There is a retirement challenge that nobody talks about. It was actually unearthed in an 85-year study on happiness by Harvard. It was actually my biggest challenge when I retired. In this video, I'm going to share with you the details of that challenge. We'll talk about the retirement challenge discovered in the Harvard study, my experience of this retirement challenge, and advice to overcome this challenge. OK, let's dive in and start with the Harvard study. In 1938, Harvard researchers began a study into happiness. That study still continues to this day. They wanted to find out what makes us happy in life. They asked people from all over the world, and as participants entered midlife and retirement, they started asking questions about retirement. Based on their responses, the number one challenge that people faced in retirement was this, not being able to replace the social connections that had sustained them for so long at work. Retirees don't miss working, they miss people. One participant, when asked about what he missed from his 50 years at work, was this, absolutely nothing about the work itself, I miss the people and the friendships. Another participant had a similar feeling. After he retired, he found it hard to stay in touch with his colleagues. For many of us, work is where we feel we matter most. To our workmates, our customers, our communities, and even to our families, because we are providing for them. Here's my early retirement story. The findings of this Harvard study didn't surprise me. After retiring early at 44, this was exactly what I discovered too. When I retired, I suddenly had an abundance of time and energy. It was a honeymoon period, but it didn't last. Like many new retirees, I poured my energy into hobbies and interests, like planning the travel to places on my bucket list. I got to spend a lot of time with my family. I ticked many things off my bucket list. One of the things I ticked off was that I got my motorbike license. I went down to Wales for six days and did an intensive. I hadn't been on a motorbike since I was 17 and in six days I went from that to having a full license to drive a 650cc motorbike. I also indulged my passion for horse racing. I joined a syndicate of other owners and had a leg in quite a few horses but something was still missing. I needed to work. I didn't want anything too substantial, just one or two days a week. I didn't want the pressures and the responsibilities of full-time work. After all, what's the point in retiring if you're just going to go straight back to work? Even though I'm an introvert, I needed to be around people, and work provides that. So after four years of not working, and with my 50th birthday looming, I decided to return to work. Not fully, just one or two days a week. This realisation that I needed to work taught me an important lesson about retirement, which I'll share with you later in the video. When it came to work itself, and I look back on my history, I was often so preoccupied with financial concerns and targets that I didn't notice how significant my work relationships really were. That is, until they'd gone. So here are some tips on how you can overcome this big retirement challenge. You'll get a lot of people on YouTube, and that includes me, advising you to take up hobbies. But looking back, I don't think taking up hobbies was enough. People who fare best in retirement cultivate connections, and yet no one talks about the importance of developing meaning and purpose in retirement. If I could go back and talk to my 40-year-old self, this is what I would say. Nick, to retire happy, make sure you invest in the relationships now. You're going to need them after you've retired. I had a great example in my own life of somebody who'd done just that and had a successful retirement as a result, and that was my own father. He had nurtured relationships throughout his entire working life, and that meant when he retired from the police force after 30 years at 56 years of age, he stepped straight into retirement with gusto and with plenty of people awaiting him. He played golf with his pals. He tended an allotment with a bunch of guys in the village. He spent one or two days as a solicitor's advisor on police matters. He was never stuck for company and his life had purpose and meaning. And not just that, he had plenty of social connections. That was the secret. Sadly, after retiring, my life didn't look anything like that. I left work after 25 years with not one single friend or colleague who I could stay in touch with. And I feel pretty bad about that. I had neglected this most important lesson from my dad. The reason I had neglected it was in the obsessive pursuit of ambition and business growth. It took the death of my father a year earlier to jolt me out of that obsession and set me on a path to early retirement at 44 years of age. So how can you avoid my fate? Well, you can start by asking yourself these questions. Who are the people I most enjoy spending time with? 
What makes them valuable to me? Am I appreciating them? Am I making enough of an effort with them? And what kinds of connections am I missing that I want more of? For example, I didn't have enough true friends. That was part of the problem. My entire life was inextricably linked with my business, to the exclusion of everything else. Looking back, I wish I'd paid more attention to the people who worked with me and spent less time on the problems and the challenges of running a business. I loved my business and for the most part, I enjoyed my business partner's company. But I know I was a difficult and impatient business partner and boss. I was always striving, driven by ambition, never satisfied. It's hardly surprising that when I left my business after selling it that nobody stayed in touch. Not just that, they didn't respond to my efforts to stay in touch with them. That was my mistake. For a long time I was bitter and cynical about this until I realised it wasn't them, it was me. I wish I had got to know everyone a little bit better and hadn't been so hard on them. So my advice to you is to understand if you are still working and you haven't yet retired, work is an important part of your personal experience. And the more you enrich it with relationships with the people who you work with, the more you will benefit after you've retired. As my dad proved, work too is life. As I mentioned earlier in the video, when I retired at 44 after 25 years at work, I didn't have one single friend. Watch this video next if you want to learn how I overcame that challenge and thrived in retirement. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video.